Hello everyone, Hyper here, and welcome to the Big Dumb Strats Guide to Mythic Raden. Before we jump into the guide, I just wanted to say sorry about the long hiatus between these videos. There's been a lot of stuff going on. And also, we won't have Champion Lozi for the next few videos. But nonetheless, I still have all the information that they gave me whenever I wrote the guides. So it should be a quick video. We also have a written guide available on Wowhead. You can find the link to it in the description box. The written guide is basically just a mirror of the video, but it will be kept a little more up to date if there are any strategy changes down the line. Without further ado, let's get started with the mythic changes. So on Raden, the major change is that you have an extra orb to deal with on each set of orbs. On Heroic, two orbs appear, you kill one of them, the boss gets empowered by the other. On Mythic, three orbs appear and you can only kill one of them, which means that the boss will be empowered by two simultaneously, which also means that you will have two adds to deal with on each set. The Mythic Orb is a Nightmare Orb, and whenever that hits the boss, it will spawn a Nightmare Add that calls down Dread Infernos on random players. It's just a beam from the sky, and you just kind of have to kite it around, move out of it. It's fairly obvious. And then the group mechanic of it is a huge nightmare circle that spawns on a random player. And then the closest player to that circle will get the next stack. And that goes on for five bounces like all the other mechanics on this fight. Before you even pull the boss, there's a few things that you need to set up. First of all, you need to assign five melee DPS in a specific order who will deal with either the void or the nightmare empowerments so that's either bouncing the circles during void or taking over the huge circle during nightmare you will also want to assign five range players who will either deal with the vita or nightmare empowerments depending on which orb set you are on so that's either bouncing the lightning between two players or dealing with the large circle from the nightmare Ideally, you also want to have at least one or two backup players assigned to each set, just because sometimes uh, you get targeted by the opposite mechanic, and in that case, you're not able to help with your own assignment. So the boss positioning will change 90 degrees each time you deal with an orb set. For the first set, you will tank the boss in the north corner where he basically starts you just want to kind of drag him next to the pillar which allows your melee dps to use that whole cubby area to deal with the nightmare orb then on the second set you rotate the boss 90 degrees uh, to the east side of the room and then that allows the raid to and your melee dps to bounce the void orb against the wall after that you rotate the boss another 90 degrees uh, to the stairs which is the entrance of the room and this again allows your melee players to deal with the void by bouncing it against the wall and each one of these rotations just gives your dps more time to kill each of the orbs the only one that is kind of a tight check is the first one because you're not moving the boss anywhere but it's a fairly long travel distance there's two major strategies that people are using nowadays the first one is that you deal with three sets of orbs and then you lust the second phase. The second strategy is that you lust on pull and you only deal with two sets of orbs. Obviously this requires a much higher DPS output from your raid, but it does allow you to make the fight significantly shorter and also skip a set of orbs. On the first set of orbs, you will want to kill the void orb, which means that the boss will be empowered by Nightmare and Vita. Your range DPS should be set up and assigned to bounce the Vita between the two markers that you see on the screen. And your melee DPS should be set up to rotate the Nightmare uh, debuff in the corner of the cubby, which is marked with the diamond marker on your screen. And the boss will just be tanked on Skull and that gives enough space for melee and the tanks to kite Dread Infernos as needed. And if you're doing the three orb strategy where you don't lust on pull, then you will probably want to focus down the adds. However, if you're doing the two orb strategy where you lust on pull, you generally want to focus on boss damage and just passively cleave down the adds. On orb set number two, you will want to kill the Vita orb, which means that you will have to deal with Nightmare and Void at the same time. In this combination, your ranged DPS will be dealing with the Nightmare debuff 
on the pillar that is closest to them. That is kind of the area that we assign, but you can use any area of the room. Um, you just need to make sure that your range DPS always run to the same spot. And then your melee DPS will be dealing with the void debuff. And the easiest way of dealing with this is have your tank take the first bounce and bounce it into the wall right next to the boss. And then your melee DPS can take over from there in their pre-assigned rotation and just bounce it into the wall over and over while still hitting the boss. I mean, this set you will have a Void add, and they significantly nerfed how much damage Void Collapse does. Normally, if it goes on a player with immunity, you want to get out of the group, immune it, then run back in. If it goes on a player without immunity, it is no longer necessary to run out and suicide or bait it. Uh, so just stand in the group in melee, and you should be able to just live through it. If you're doing the three orb strategy, then you want to focus down this nightmare add and then hit the boss. So ideally, you only get two void collapses. And then if you're doing the lost on pull strategy with only two orb sets, then you want to focus the boss and just cleave down the add, in which case you will get three void collapses. So with the lost on pull strategy at this point, you should be close to pushing the boss. You will probably see the third set of orbs spawn, but you want to keep hitting the boss and just have your tank kite and weave between the orbs uh, to give you and buy you enough time to push the boss. Typically, if Raden is below like 47%, maybe 48, if you have really high single target DPS, that is kind of the cutoff where you can push the boss before an orb set spawns. But typically we recommend having the boss around 45% when the third wave spawns. And that should be uh, enough time for you to push the boss to phase two before any of the orbs hit. If you're doing the three set strategy, this is where the tank will rotate Raden to the entrance of the room, the base of the stairs. And here in this set, you will kill the nightmare orb, which means that your raid will have to deal with both Vita and Void. In this case, your ranged DPS are still dealing with Vita on their pre-assigned markers, and your melee DPS will be dealing with Void, and they just want to bounce that uh, towards the stairs. And then there's on both edges of the stairs, you can bounce the debuff against the edge so it doesn't go anywhere. It basically acts as a wall, so all your melee DPS know exactly where to run whenever they need to soak. In this set, again, you will have a Void Add and a Vita Add. In this set, you want to focus down the Void Add, definitely, and then push the boss as you're finishing off the Vita Add. Phase two is considered the easier part of this encounter, especially if you still have Bloodlust. Uh, the big thing is that you always want to break charged bonds as fast as possible. We typically have the player who is tethered to everyone else move, and then everyone else can just keep doing DPS. However, if this is a melee player, then they usually try to move away from each other. Also, setting up gateways uh, with Warlocks makes it a lot easier to break charged bonds. A big thing in this phase is the Corrupted Existence debuff, which gets applied to a few players, and if they get healed to full health, they will instantly die. We recommend using a simple macro that will cancel most major HOTs from Paladins, uh, Druids, and Priests just to make sure that you're not getting any extra healing while you have this debuff because you might jump to full health. If you're a class with very high passive self-healing such as Demon Hunters, it can also be a good idea to either step into a puddle that you would normally dodge just to take some damage so you're not constantly sitting at full health during your meta. Moving on to the DPS section, there's a few things that your DPS need to pay attention to. Most significantly, uh, you need to know which strategy your raid is doing, either bloodlusting on pull or bloodlusting phase two. If you bloodlust on pull, then you want to put way more damage into the boss and prioritize boss damage over pretty much anything else. If you're doing the three orb strategy where you bloodlust the second phase, then you typically want to allocate more of your damage into the adds and less into the boss. On the first set of orbs, you should have one of your demon hunters at least tag the orb, if not completely go out and hit it the entire way. Um, if you have a lot of ranged DPS, especially warlocks, they can usually deal with the first orb fairly easily. However, if you're lacking DPS such as warlocks, maybe if your raid has uh, way more mages, 
then you should definitely have your Demon Hunter completely go out of melee for the first orb and hit it the entire time. On the second set of orbs, pretty much all your mobile melee should go out and hit it. Your immobile melee can kind of stay on the boss at this point because there's so much damage. Um, and then on the third set, again, all of your DPS should be hitting the orb instead of the boss. One thing to keep in mind is that adds spawn about one minute apart uh, with the first set of adds spawning at 30 seconds into the fight. So two minute cooldowns that benefit from hitting multiple targets such as Combustion or Breath of Syndragosa should be used on the first set of adds. And especially if you're doing the three orb strategy, this means that it will be back up for the third wave of adds, which is a kind of dangerous one. Um, so it, it just helps you out with pushing the boss and making that wave a lot safer. To give you an idea of the cooldown timings, if you're bloodlusting on pull, you will only get two uses of two minute cooldowns and two uses of three minute cooldowns. Um, so the two minute cooldowns should be held the second use for whenever you transition the boss and you're trying to burn down that execute phase. And then three minute cooldowns will be up during the last phase. However, if you're doing the Bloodlust, the second phase strategy, then your two minute cooldowns should see three uses and three minute cooldowns will still only get two uses like they would with the other strategy. Moving on to the healing section, first of all, the overall damage taken on this encounter is not that crazy compared to some of the other end bosses. And even on early strategy, this fight was predominantly three healed. Mostly the damage spikes in this uh, encounter happen whenever orbs hit or whenever people are taking damage from avoidable mechanics. Most notably Dread Inferno or Chain Lightning. If people take too much damage from those, you will see quite a bit of spike damage. But other than that, there's not that much static damage going through until you move on to the second phase. The major thing to keep an eye on is the Unleashed Void, which applies the Healing Absorb to the entire raid. Throughput cooldowns such as Tranquility are super beneficial at healing through that. This debuff gets applied on the very first set of orbs and the third set. Aerial damage reduction cooldowns such as Power Ward Barrier can be used on Void Collapses, although since it's been significantly nerfed and the healing reduction duration has been nerfed, it's not that important anymore to assign healing cooldowns to Void Collapses. However, if there's a sketchy one, especially on the third set of orbs, then you could use a healing cooldown to help the melee out. In phase one, the majority of healing cooldowns should be assigned for whenever the orbs hit the bosses because whenever each of the orbs hit, they will deal different types of damage to the entire raid. And it's important to keep the boss in the locations that we showed earlier in the video because that kind of staggers the orb hits slightly, giving your healers time to top the raid between each of the orb hits. Then once you transition the boss to phase 2, most of the damage in this phase comes from Ruin, which is just a passive ticking damage that goes out on the entire raid. On the last part of this encounter, you should mostly chain healing cooldowns, but you need to be very aware of the players who have Corrupted Existence debuff, because if they get healed to full, they will die. So it's very important that you have this debuff marked on your raid frames, and avoid spot healing these players at all costs. Another thing to keep in mind in this phase is that Decaying Strike, which is the tank buster ability, does damage based on the tank's current health whenever the ability hits. So the lower their health is when they get the debuff, the less this debuff will do. So keep an eye on that timer and make sure that you're not overhealing the tank and keeping them at full health when they're trying to drop their health pool to reduce the amount of damage they take from Decaying Strike. Tanking this encounter is mostly about positioning. And like I said, you start with the boss in the cubby, then you rotate him 90 degrees to the east of the room, then 90 degrees to the entrance of the room. Um, and then in the last phase, you can kind of tank the boss wherever. The only other tank mechanic in phase one is nullifying strike. And it's a super straightforward debuff. You just taunt on one stack and that's the end of it. Make sure that you do have taunts available for whenever the adds spawn, because especially when DPS are bursting, 
and the ads are spawning far out, you don't have time to generate threat on them before they walk into melee. So having a taunt available to get them into melee is super important. Once your raid commits to pushing the boss to phase two, especially if there are orbs up, you need to know how to kite the boss between the orbs. And this can take a little bit of practice to do, but based on where you are whenever the orbs spawn, basically you want to move the boss between the two closest orbs and then just run him in a circle. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but monks are especially good at this because they can speed taunt the boss, so the boss ends up outrunning the orbs, giving your DPS time to push him to phase 2. The only other thing to mention for phase 1 is that on the second set of orbs, whichever tank does not have boss aggro should take the first unstable void bounce and just aim it at the wall. For phase 2, again, it's fairly straightforward, there's only one debuff that you need to worry about, but it's a fairly significant one and that's the decaying strike. So normally you want to let your health pool dip as low as possible without dying uh, before decaying strike hits and then get healed up and then you can do the taunt swap right after decaying strike is applied. So decaying strike will deal damage based on your current health whenever it is applied to you. So especially if you're a high health pool tank, such as a Blood DK or a Vengeance Demon Hunter, if you get hit with Decaying Strike while you're at max HP, you will most likely die no matter what healing cooldowns or externals or defensives you use. So it's very important to keep an eye on this timer and make sure you know when it's happening to allow your health pool to drop down a little bit before taking this debuff. Thank you so much for watching this Raden guide and if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. And again, even though they weren't here, thanks to Lozi and Shampi for providing the tanking and healing information for this guide. And if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.